Good morning. I have woken up near Ashington, where I'm tipping this morning. After tipping at Ashington, I'm going down to Redcar for a load to Immingham, and then I'm off to Hull back down to Yeovil. I'm just going to get myself dressed because I am still in my pyjamas, and then we can get on to Ashington. First of all, I hop out of the cab on this very cold morning and do my daily checks. When I went to bed last night, there was no one else parked on this industrial estate. Now, there seems to be a lot of cars parked on the pavement up by the side of the lorry. This seems a little bit odd. <laughs> I've woke up and there's cars all the way down the, the path next to me, actually parked on the path. And there's a few people over there giving me dirty looks like I shouldn't be here. So, I just my cup of tea out and we can go. I make that ready to go. I make my way out of the industrial estate and I think I must have hit shift changeover as there seems to be a lot of traffic around for this time of the morning. I'm only around half an hour away from where I'm tipping and when I get there, there is already a lorry in there waiting to tip. So I pull up behind and get myself ready to walk over to the office. I need to put all my orange stuff on. I need to find my ticket. I've got to get my ticket signed and I've also got to get my phone signed as well. My hard hat's in my side locker so I'm going to get that before I go over to the office. I've just been in, she signed all my paperwork, I've just got to wait here five minutes because they're in a meeting and then she gave me the signal to go round and tip. I'm just making another cup of tea while I'm waiting so I'm hoping that I've got time to boil the water two cups of tea in the morning. You've got to have two cups of tea in the morning, haven't you? What I'm also going to check while I'm sat here is where I'm going next, which is a place near Red Car. I got my cup of tea done. 20 minutes later and we have movement. We have been given a signal to go round, but there is somebody in front of me. So I reckon he will tip first and then I will tip second. I make my way up around the one-way system, up to the tipping bays. And once I'm up here, someone will let me know which bay I need to tip in today. Right, the last time I tipped in one of these bays here. So I'm just gonna wait here. And then someone comes over on a forklift to let me know where I need to go. All I need to do now is back into one of the empty bays with my load of grit sand that I have bought up from Plymouth, which is a 420 mile trip from the southwest of England up to the northeast. The chap gives me the signal that it's all ready to tip and once he's out of the way, I tip the body up, pulling forwards gradually so that my tailboard doesn't hit the back of the bay as the sand comes out. I have also got my onboard weigher on at this point and once I can see that the trailer is empty, I can put the body down. Then I can get out and go to the back of the trailer to see if there is any sand left in there that needs brushing out. A few bits here. Frozen on. Very well. Down in the southwest where this was loaded, we had torrential rain and flooding, which meant that the sand was quite wet. And then where I parked last night, it was down to zero degrees, which has resulted in some of the sand being frozen to the side of the trailer. It's not the worst that I've had it, but I could have still done without it. I'm glad that it's over. Oh, put my sheet on before I go. I'm just going to check on where I'm going to red car. It's looking like there is a big delay on the A19, so I may go a different way. The chap that works in here watches my video, so I'm going to give him a couple of my cups that I am giving out on the run up to Christmas. You want some hot water? No. No, that's for you. Oh, cups! <laughs> oh, thank you! Thank you very much. No worries. Have a good Christmas. Have a good Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
and then it's off on my alternative route to the A19. I will instead take the A1M and then go across to Redcar. At the moment, Google Maps is telling me that this will take 1 hour and 34 minutes in a car, so it will be slightly longer in a HGV, especially when I'm already hitting traffic. I'm not sure if this way is getting very busy because of the A19 having hold-ups, or whether it is purely because of the morning rush hour. Either way, I'm starting to think that this is going to take me longer than 1 hour and 34 minutes. At least the sun is out and I have nice views, I guess. I come off of the A1M and head through Middlesbrough towards Redcar. There are a few different entrances into the place where I'm going at Redcar, but I make an educated guess at the entrance I need to use, and luckily I am right. Once I'm in, I'm not really sure which way I need to go, so I just need to follow signs for the Weybridge and induction area. I'm not really sure if I'm supposed to be here, I'm guessing this is the best place I can go to the Weybridge, I can talk to somebody. I have been into some big industrial places up at Redcar before, so there is a possibility that I have been in here, but if I have, it's a very, very long time ago. What was that? <laughs> I don't know what that noise is, but it doesn't sound right to me. No idea. So what I've done, I've parked on the wrong side. So what I have to do now is go all the way around, join the back of the queue on the other side and go in for an induction that will take me around 20 minutes where I also find out that those alarms were a test. Right, let's try again. The place I'm going within here is not here. I've been given a little map and I just have to follow the map to another way bridge and to the place where I am loading. Oh yeah, there's a speed limit on this bridge so it must be this one. This looks um, very nice. Very nice looking way bridge, yes, lovely. Right, let's go and see somebody. Basically, I need to go right to the end of this road to turn around somewhere. Apparently there's a turning place up here. Then I need to go back down, <laughs> left, 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 go to the place where I'm loading, and then come out back onto that way bridge. Then I have to go back to the place where I went to start with. Oh dear. I get myself turned around and follow the instructions I've been given. Once I'm in the area that I think it is, I find a loader driver and ask him where exactly I need to go. Oh yeah? Yeah. Yes, in there. Right. Yeah. 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 I make a tight turn into the yard, following the instructions, and I see the loader driver there waiting for me. The ground seems quite soft in places, so when I do the three-point turn to turn around, I make sure I keep some momentum so that it's less likely that I get stuck. I would have just had enough room to screw the truck around, but that would have been no good for the tyres or the soft ground. I reverse back until the loader driver gives me a little toot to say I'm in the right place. And here I am, picking up Ryan's Christmas present. 28 tonnes of coal. The reason Ryan is getting coal for Christmas is because he always blames me for having to go to the pub on a Friday when I am late home from work. This looks like absolutely horrible stuff to get out the trailer. Not looking forward to this at all. As I get loaded, I check the onboard weigher to check my weight. And I also check Google Maps quickly to find the best way down to Immingham Docks. And it's looking like it's a pretty clear rundown. That's put me overweight, but we shall see. The last little bit went on very quickly, and I should imagine it's quite a hard product to trickle into a trailer. I'm not sure of the tipping off procedures here, so I head back to the Weybridge. Let's see. I am 800 kilos over, somehow. I thought I'd be about 200 kilos over, if anything. And I need to go back to the place where I loaded and I have to tip off 800 kilos. 
As you can see, this ground is not the best to drive over. The first thing I do is open the grain hatch and take a little bit out just to see how the product is lying in the trailer. I don't want to open the back door until I can be sure that more than 800 kilos will not come out and also that I will be able to shut the back door once I've opened it. I dig out a little bit at a time and then go and check my weigher to see how I'm doing. Coal is something that we don't do very often, so I'm not really sure of the volume to weight ratio. I also don't want to tip off too much and end up being well underweight. Once I'm happy that I've tipped enough off, I shut the back door up and I can head back to the weigh bridge again. It's just over 800 kilos I've tipped out, but back to the weigh bridge, hopefully way out. I am okay to leave. Woohoo! She on? And now I just have to head back to the place where I first went in. I've used probably 45 minutes to an hour's driving time just driving around here. One hour and 25 minutes now until I need a break. And that's without the driving time it takes to get out of here. Right, I've got my exit pass, so now I can leave sight. I need to take a slightly different route out, but it takes me to the same place that I came in. Cheers, Cheers, thank thank you. You. I'm glad to be finally out of there and it seems like it's taken me ages to load just one product. I make my way towards the A19 and take the A19 south towards the A1M. By this point, my driving time is starting to run out, so I pop into Weatherby Services for a break. Out of the way. Right. Put myself on break. I got in here with 40 minutes to spare. The next services down is 22 miles away, so I would not have made the next services. I'm not gonna have a shower now, I'm gonna wait till later. So I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna risk it. It could be a bit of a risk not having a shower now, but you've seen the coal that is on my truck. And if I get covered in coal trying to tip, then I'm gonna need a shower. And I'm also loading something that's quite dusty after as well. So <laughs> I'm gonna risk it for a biscuit. Um, have my shower later hopefully. I'm gonna make myself a porridge. I'm gonna pop in and go to the loo and then come back and it should be done. Porridge all ready and that should be ready when I get back. As I'm walking over to the services I look down and the coal has definitely ruined my boots. They never seem to stay clean for too long on this job. Back in the cab and I'm just gonna make myself a cup of tea. I've got a few minutes so I'm just going to eat my porridge and make myself a cup of tea and then I can be on my way over to Immingham. It always amazes me in this services how some of the truck drivers act. There can be an Arctic trying to reverse into a space and then there's another truck that will come along and try and pass either behind or in front and I've had it done to me in here as well before. I think somebody's forgot their lunch and their wife's out here waiting with their lunchbox. I've now had my break and I'm about to set off for Immingham and that's reset my four and a half hours driving. When I head out of the services, I head back onto the A1M and follow this south until I get to the M62. From there, I pick up the M18 south for a few miles before picking up the M180. The M180 turns into the A180 and I follow the signs for Immingham Docks. This journey has taken me a little over an hour and a half. I now just need to find the place on the docks where I'm tipping as I've never been there before. And luckily it wasn't too hard to find. Well, I've weighed in, which was nice and easy. So now I just need to follow the one-way system, go and look for the place where I'm tipping, which is just across the way and hopefully it won't take me too long to tip. Fingers crossed. The sun is 
Not 100% sure where I need to tip this, so I grab somebody's attention to ask where exactly I need to tip. They point me in the right direction, and as I get there, somebody is already tipping. So I need to wait for them to tip before I can tip myself. Luckily, he doesn't take too long, and once he's out of the way, I can drive in and spin myself around so that I can tip in the corner of the yard. Coming into this place, I realise just how many types of coal there are. The ground in here is very black and slippery, so I take it steady as I turn around. As I back up to the pile, I'm reversing right into the sun, so it's quite hard to see. I get out to check my distance and everything looks fine, so I open the tailboard, ready to tip the load. This is a tailboard tip so it shouldn't take too long. I raise the body, keeping an eye on what's coming out of the back and also watching my weigher. As the coal comes out, I edge myself forwards very slowly so that the tailboard doesn't dig into the pile and come off. Once it's out, I can go back and check the inside of the trailer. A big lump up the top. Unfortunately, there's only one way to get this out and that is by digging it out. I dig as much as I can out and loosen everything up in the corner of the trailer. Then instead of brushing it all the way down, I get back in the cab and lift the body again, hoping that this time it will all come out. That's a bit better, I just got to get that out now. Chimney, chimney, chimney. There is quite a bit stuck on the floor of the trailer, but with a bit of scraping, it all comes off lovely. This time, because there's not so much, I sweep the remainder out. And this means that I can pick up all the bits I've missed and I end up with a lovely clean trailer. So now I just need to pack everything away and go back round to the weighbridge. Having to dig the coal out has lost me quite a bit of time. So I tried to get myself weighed out as quickly as possible and on my way to Hull where I'm loading for Yeovil. I head out of the docks the way that I came in and as per normal when you want to be quick you get stuck at every set of red traffic lights. I've collected and delivered quite a bit over the years in this area. However, there is one thing that I have never done, which I'm about to do next, and that is go over the Humber Bridge. I have been past it many a times on both sides, but never over it. And I'm really glad that I've had the opportunity to go over it. And I'm also really glad that it's a lovely, clear evening and the sun is just setting in the distance. It just seems so much nicer than the Severn Bridge down in the southwest that takes you over to Wales. The sea is not brown and murky like it is there, even on a clear day. Although unlike the Severn Bridge, which is now free, this one does have a toll. So I will need to pay this one and then Wayne's will reimburse me. Going over the bridge cuts out over an hour and a half's journey of going around the water to the other side, so it is well worth paying the money for the toll. I get to the dock gates where I'm loading out of and I have to show them a form of ID to get in and then I can head down to where I'm loading out of, which isn't very far into the docks and I'm straight onto the way bridge. So I get my paperwork together and go and get myself booked in, ready to be loaded. I've tried my best but they're not going to load me. Looks like they're still loading other stuff, but they're not going to load wheat distillers, which is what I want. Oh dear. Can't do anything. I should have had a shower earlier, because now I can't get a shower. They're not going to load me tonight, I've got to come back in the morning. Now I need to find somewhere to park up for the night and wait until they open in the morning. I find a little industrial area with no double yellow lines, so that is where I'm going to park for tonight. This is sometimes why the job can be really frustrating because it is now 10 to 5 and I'm parked up. As I'm parked up early, I am going to make some tea. Well, I say make some tea, I have got a like chicken broth thing that I've made myself at home and I've got all week. <laughs> I want to have my tea and try to get an early night because the place where I'm loading tomorrow, they open really early. There is literally nothing worse than being parked up early when you know you could have got loaded. It wouldn't have been that much of a hassle. 
you could have got down the road a bit. Every time you get early finishes and held up, it just means you're home later on a Friday. I had another two and a half hours driving, so I could have actually really got somewhere. Never mind. Hmm, yummy. When this sort of thing happens, you always think, oh, what if I didn't get held up because they had a meeting this morning? What if it wasn't so cold that some of the sand froze to the side of the trailer? What if there wasn't a crash on the A19 and I went a different way? What if it didn't take so long in red car? What if I didn't get overloaded with coal and have to tip off? It's all those little things that add up. Anyway, thanks for watching and good night.